Um, Lucha says, uh, I'd say the system is more main event mafia than, than bloodline. I'm just saying bloodline because they're, it's more recent and they're just keeping them super strong. Uh, I don't think they have a lot in common with, um, <clears throat> the only thing they have in common with main event mafia is that they were all, you know, Eddie and Moose were both main eventers. And then they're, they're, um, talking about Myers as if he's had a, a bunch of titles and a bunch of big accomplishments and stuff like that. And he's had some of that stuff, but he was always kind of a job guy. Um, but I think, um, main event mafia immediately was booked to have a power struggle between sting and Kurt Angle. And that was the whole idea behind, that was the whole idea behind the group. The system is all focused around Moose as the leader and, you know, Eddie Edwards and Brian Myers are subservient to Moose, even though they're still big stars. Main event mafia was a bunch of different main eventers rolled into one group and we automatically had a power struggle. So that's why I just compared it more to the bloodline um, because the Usos were subservient to um, Roman Reigns, although Moose is nowhere near as disrespectful to his group as Roman Reigns was to the, to the, to the bloodline. Okay. Let's see. We got another. We got another question. It seems. Uh, it seems. This is from Steen fan again from Billy. It seems every wrestling president eventually is involved in an angle. Even Shad Khan was shown on Dynamite. Will Anthony Ciccioni be involved in an angle and uh, shown on TV before the end of 2024? I'm gonna say no because he's not a. He's not a wrestling guy. He's just not. He is a TV exec. I don't think we ever see him on camera whatsoever. Ariel Schneer, maybe we've seen him on camera before because he was Dr. Ariel whenever um, whenever Callis and Demore first took over. But Anthony Ciccioni, no. Uh, and the only time we'll, we might even see him on TV is like if he's in the crowd, you know, because they've done that with like Leonard Asper and they and they with Ed Nordholm. And I think they even had who the guy that I, I don't even think Richard Schaefer from Golden Boy Box. I don't even think he's in the company anymore. I don't, I don't know what the hell happened to him. Like we have not heard that name in a long time. So yeah, I, I, I don't see it. And I'll be honest, like, you know, by the end of the, I don't even know if Anthony Ciccioni will be the president anymore. I think that was more of a band aid. I, I don't even know who's going to be the president by the end of it. Because it's not like the company has uh, taken great steps since they lost to more. In fact, you know, TV ratings and pay-per-view buys have only gone down. And so have ticket sales. Like things have only gotten worse you know, business wise since, uh, since Demore left. So we'll, we'll see. I, I, I don't know. I don't even know if Chichoni will be the president by the end of the year. Um, but great question, uh, Billy. Thank you very much for that. Uh, this one comes from, uh, Brian Quinones, BQ himself. What the hell is happening to the knockouts division? Well, what the hell is happening in the knockouts division is, uh, like Billy said earlier, they lost everybody and they replaced them with nobody. <laughs> And right now, what they're trying to do is piecemeal cards together and just pull in random indie indie girls um, who can't go to work like Explosion doing tryouts. Example, Alley Catch. Alley Catch has been around a long time, and she stinks. And you know what? And a lot of people like her as a person, so I'm not going to dog her. I know I, I've been in some discords where I was pretty mean, but I'm not going to do that here. Um, but Ali, you know, Ali catch is Ali catch. She's a GCW and I think she's perfect for that company. But as far as in the ring, I don't know that she was ever really trained, you know, it just, just like, she's just not very good. Right. There's just not, she doesn't have the talent. She shouldn't be on televised wrestling. Okay. Second time they brought her in, they brought her in before. And I think she did a death match with Jordan Grace at one point. Um, no, no, she did a match with, so I think Masha Slamovich. She did a match with Masha Slamovich in uh, in uh, Nashville, and then they brought her back, and she's going against Tasha Steeles. It was on Explosion. I didn't watch, so if you guys watched it and you liked it, let me know. Um, and and then they brought in Viva Vun and Alex Gracia, and I actually did watch their match because I was like, man, we really need some knockouts. And I I had heard of them, and I was like, I'm wondering if they could go, and it was okay but they're not, they weren't anything special either. And so, um, and then now at the upcoming tapings, they're bringing in Shaza McKenzie and Shaza is very much like Alley Catch. She's been around a long time. I don't think she's properly trained or if she was, you know, she should get her money back. She's not very good. I've seen her in some matches and in some indies. <clears throat> and because I remember like she was kind of an, um, a Twitter name. 
mainly because I think that she's got some famous friends that were kind of pumping her up. And um and specifically Sean Ross Tapp, I'll say. Okay. And who whom I think they're friends with. I don't think there's any coincidence that she's actually um making her TNA debut in Cincinnati, which is the same area where Sean Ross like Sean Ross was probably gonna be there. So I, I, I don't think that there's any um I don't think there's any coincidence there. Um <clears throat> and she's just not very good. But I'm sure she's a sweetheart of a person, but like like we have to be honest. Can she go or not? She can't go. I'm willing to, I'm willing to be wrong on this one. But I get the like if she if she could go a little bit, I think that you would want to put her in with somebody that's much better than Ash by Elegance to have a, a debut match because Ash by Elegance also not great in the ring. Can be a fun character. Last week her segment was Death. One of the worst segments in the history of TNA. <laughs> that's covering a lot of ground. Um but her in-ring work has never been her strong suit. So you put her in there with Shaza McKenzie, who's got two left feet and is constantly overthinking each of her spots. It's a it's a recipe for disaster. They need somebody in this company that's willing to go out and do the groundwork to recruit and recruit talent, to hit the indie shows and find out who these unsung wrestlers are that could possibly make it one day and get them before WWE and AEW does. Like, AEW signed Queen Aminata. Like, why wasn't TNA all over that? You know what I mean? Like, she's been around a little. I had never heard of her before she went to AEW. Um, They need boots on the ground out there recruiting. That's what they need to be doing. And they can't be bringing in these meme wrestlers and these, you know, you know, 10-year vets who never, like, who just never got any better. Um, who, who could save the knockouts division? Just somebody that's a competent recruiter, I think ultimately could save them, uh, could, could bring them to prominence. I think they're going to try to put a bandaid on it by bringing back Mickey James this weekend, but we've seen Mickey James time and time again. She's never bumped business. She does increase the interest in the knockouts division a little bit, but she's never really been a boon to business. Um, I thought that Camille Brickhouse would have been the one that actually could, kind of help turn things around, but it appears that she is, she is signing with AEW or she has already signed with AEW. We have not seen her debut yet, but <clears throat> AEW just, they're locking up all kinds of talent. And that's why you got to be smart in your recruiting. You got to get the talents that aren't on AEW's radar yet and get them on the three-year deals. Um, now there's a, you know, there's lots of talents that, that are out there like, I thought, and Lucha brings a great point, Miyu Yamashita, um, who's working MLW coming up, and she just worked uh, Jordan Grace a couple weeks ago. I thought that would have been the perfect person to bring in. Now, she's only in the country until June, but I, I think um, I think that you could start a relationship with the Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling. It looks like AEW and Stardom are kind of locked into a deal, so you go to the next best thing. You got Tokyo Joshi Pro. I think WWE and Marigold, um, are going to probably start working together a little bit. Marigold is the company that Rossi Ogawa, who just left Stardom, who's uh, starting up, and he's actually taking some Stardom talent with him. And um, so Tokyo Joshi Pro, which is where Miyu Monster is from, uh, you could do that. Um, and you know, maybe kind of you know bring some talent in there. Um, Kylie Ray is out there. Kylie Ray is probably the best, like most television ready who has like some street cred. She's, she's out there again. I know she kind of burned impact before, you know, she had that anxiety attack before um, she had that anxiety attack before her big match with Deanna Perrazzo years ago during the pandemic, you know, and she uh, kind of, <laughs> she went missing like right before the show started. Um, but I, I think, I think, you know, Kylie Ray um, and then they, they signed uh, like a UK talent, um, I think her name's Harley. I can't remember what her last name is, but she looked pretty. Like I saw her highlights, she looked pretty good. Um, that, so you could go there, and um, there's Holly, Hollywood, uh, Holly J. What's what's her name? Hollywood, Hollywood, something like that. Haley, something like that. You know, you could probably give her a shot. I know that she's really wanting to be a WWE like 
star, but you know, you could bring her in and, and see what she's got. And, um, and maybe she can make a name for herself in TNA. You know, there's all, there's all, yeah. It's a Har Harley. Yeah. The Harley chick. Yeah. Har I don't know where her Harley's last name is, but she's uh, from the UK. She won the very fake gut check challenge <laughs> in, uh, in, uh, in uh, the UK, the gut check challenge that hardly ever leads to somebody being a, a big star. Um, yeah. Haley J Holly, Hollywood, Haley J. I got to work on that name. Too many H's for my taste, but uh, yeah. And she's uh, she's an OVW star. You know, OVW is always, you know, cranking out, you know, female talent. I think NWA loses, uses a lot of uh, OVW talent too. So um, there's talent out there. You just need somebody out there recruiting to, to, to bring them in. Okay. This one's from Andrew Bowen. It says, if there was a draft of TNA talent, who should be the first pick for WWE and AEW? So like, this is basically like if, uh, if like a, a NFL draft, right? And all the TNA talents came available. Who should be the first pick for WWE and and AEW? Um, oh, Harley Hudson is the the gut, TNA gut check, and uh, Marty Marty Bell is working with Marty Bell's been around a long time. They've had Marty Bell before. Marty Bell didn't do nothing. They had like they brought in the Hex, right? They brought in the Hex, and they were in for one show and they left. So. Um, yeah, but back back to the topic at hand, who would be the first pick for WWE and AEW? Uh, Jordan Grace. And I don't even think it's close. It's Jordan Grace. Um, some people would be surprised by that because, um, you know, I think everybody would think that I would, I would say Josh Alexander. Josh Alexander's got a lot of injuries. He's getting older. He had that really bad neck. And um, he might be another guy that has small room charisma. Now that doesn't mean he couldn't go to AEW today. And could they throw him in with Will Ospreay? Could he have another five-star match? He could. That's not what I'm saying, but they had the opportunity to get Josh Alexander and they already passed on him. And then he just, he just resigned with TNA. Now he was trying to get out of his deal, but um, I'm going to say Jordan Grace, because when she was in that Royal Rumble earlier this year, I think that was an audition of sorts. And uh, once she went there, I was like, there's no chance in hell that TNA is going to be able to re-sign her once her contract's up next year. There's no chance. Because she went in there, and she was much better than most of the talent that was in there. And in fact, she came across uh, like just the biggest star. Like She looked like she belonged right next to Bianca Belair, and Bianca Belair is fantastic. Um, in the ring, Jordan's better. Bianca is more famous. She's the bigger star. I don't think it would take very much for for Jordan to either get to her level or get or surpass her if she were to go there in WWE. And I think that she's very much the type that Triple H would like, you know, bodybuilder type. She's great shape, can cut a promo, and as far as in the ring, she's just as good or better than most of the talent that they have there. Um, and um, could could she be a really big star in AEW? You know that that's that's the problem. You know AEW. Um, AEW has had a tough time booking their women um, as of late. But could she? Yes, absolutely. She absolutely could. Now, now after that, you would just think, like, who would be, you know, okay, now let's remove Jordan Grace from the equation. Who would be, um, who would be like, the, the top for AEW and the top for WWE? Because they would go after different people. And I think once you once you remove Jordan Grace from the equation and say, okay, WWE, who's your top draft pick? Joe Hendry. And um, and that's that's the point being made here. It says, I think you or JD have mentioned Hendry as an LA Knight upgrade, and for AW, I lean towards Jordan Grace. So I think for WWE, Joe Hendry would be the guy. Absolutely. He is everything that they're looking for. He's a big guy. He can sing. He's got charisma. He's from the UK, right? They like to do those big UK shows. They already have Drew. If you bring in, you know, Joe Hendry, you know, I know they're going to Scotland this year. They could, you know, do another one with them as like main and co-main. You know what I mean? I think Joe Hendry would be the perfect guy for WWE to take from TNA. And in fact, I don't see that being like outside of the realm of a possibility. Now for AEW, you know, some, some would say, you know, af after Jordan, 
you know that that's the, that's the tough one. I don't think they really have anybody that wasn't already on their roster that they really would be trying to go after at this point. The current construct of TNA. I think they've already kind of poached TNA and Impact for all the talent that they would ever want. But <coughs> I I I could see them being interested in Hammerstone. I could see them being arrested in Josh. Josh because Josh could come in and have just really good matches. But again, he would be like, you know, Kyle O'Reilly or somebody like that, like, you know, just a guy that comes in and has good matches, but is never really promoted or pushed as a star. Um, you know, ha- Hammerstone. I, I was surprised that AEW didn't pick up Hammerstone just because I thought that he would fit in nicely with like a MJM faction to kind of go up against the Adam Cole faction that they have going on. And, uh, and he, he has a, he has a great look. Um, you know, WWE would probably be a good fit for him too. Um, but I, 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 I could see AEW kind of wanting Hammerstone. Uh, Hammerstone's kind of like, um, he's probably like the, the male roster that like, I think could fit in either one of the promotions. So yeah, th- those would be my picks. Um, man, we've already gone 38 minutes into this mailbag. Okay, and then uh, the rest I'm gonna save for uh, I'm gonna save for the episode of overtime this week. Um, but let's go ahead and get into the uh, into the episode. Um, oh, actually, hold on, we got some uh, comments here. Um, Lucha says uh, Josh would be an RH ROH star. I don't know about uh, AEW. I I think that he could be a mid level, really good worker there, um, and pro probably do some ROH stuff. But I wouldn't see him as being like a, a full time ROH guy. Billy says he'd get lost in the shuffle in AEW. Is he that much better than Roderick Strong or the 10 like him? No, he's not. No. no. Uh, TNA is really the one company that's been able to make Josh come across as like a unique talent and a special talent. I think once he leaves TNA, he loses that special talent flavor. So I think he would have a lot of trouble if he were to go over there. And I don't think because of his injury history, I don't think uh, WWE would even take a chance on him. (coughs) So that's why... Next year when his contract his contract is up, I actually am at the point now unless um some things get significantly worse in TNA. I'm at the point now where I think that he stays, kind of like what we saw with Macklin. 